to uh, History Lunch Break from the Greensboro History Museum. My name is Glenn Perkins, um, coming to you every Friday usually, so hope you've packed a good lunch today and maybe some dancing shoes because we are here to talk about National Dance Day, um, which happens every year uh, right next door to the History Museum in downtown Greensboro in the beautiful LeBauer Park. Um, and so I have several folks who were behind making National Dance Day happen this year uh, under the strange circumstances in which we all live right now. So I'm really excited to have Amanda Miller from um, Greensboro Downtown Parks Incorporated, um, as well as some of the performers who um, took part in doing um, dances that were taped and will be available to see tomorrow. So we've got uh, Jaleel Cheek, Ramya Kapadia and Tavia McKenzie. So thank you guys so much for all taking some time to join us. Um, Amanda, let's talk a little bit about National Dance Day. How long has Greensboro, uh, downtown Greensboro Park been doing that as a, a program? Yeah, so this is our fourth year of doing uh, National Dance Day GSO. Uh, first year we have to take it virtually, so that's a right. little different for us. Um, but we've always loved this event. I think it's definitely a community favorite. In 2019, we had over 3,000 people come out to LeBauer Park for the event. Um, so we're really curious to see how it's gonna go taking it virtually. Uh, but we're also really excited because it extends beyond just one day now. So people can kind of come back and revisit the performances, um, share them with other people in the community or even beyond Greensboro. So we're really excited by what we've put together. So how are people going to be able to uh, access those? Uh, when and how, I guess, are people going to be able to see those performances? Yeah, so we have a couple different platforms that we're running the event on. So technically, the event starts at 10 a.m. tomorrow, Saturday, September 19th. You can access the videos on our blog, greensboro-downtownparks.org slash blog. Uh, you just hit the National Dance Day tab, and that's kind of our virtual base camp of everything that we've got going on for the event. All of the video performances will be posted each as their own separate blog post, and they'll all be live at 10 a.m. So you can go there starting right at the beginning of the day and watch them all at once. Then on YouTube, uh, you just search Greensboro Downtown Parks. You can go to our YouTube channel. We'll have a playlist of all the videos also all available at 10 a.m. in the morning. So again, you can watch them all at once. Um, and then on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, we'll be doing a staggered release of every performance throughout the day, about one every hour starting at 10 in the morning. Um, and is it, is it always in this time of year or is it a different time of year typically? So we, uh, National Dance Day is a holiday um, that's, you know, a national holiday. Um, and the event used to take place in mid to late July. Um, and then the holiday moved. <laughs> so um, I believe it's American Dance Movement is the uh, organization that founded the holiday. Um, and it used to be, I believe, the third Saturday in July. Um, and then they decided to move the holiday to September to try to engage more school age groups um, in the event. And so we followed suit and moved the event as well to September. That's, um, so yeah, it's a busy time too. Um, we've just had recently had the, uh, National, the North Carolina Folk Festival um, and, uh, and now uh, the, the National Dance Day. So. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, it's just great because it really brings together these traditions that make us as a city um, to really show off the different people who kind of come together to uh, make us this diverse community that we are. And it's a great opportunity to, to celebrate our differences, our similarities, uh, and the connections between the past and the present. Um, so I certainly want to turn to you, some of you dancers, and uh, you know, to have, let you guys tell tell us a little bit about the different uh, about your performances. Um, Jaleel, I guess I'm going to start with you. Tell me a little bit about what. Um, tell me about, about your dance that you performed uh, that they videoed, um, and a little bit about what inspired it. Um, hi guys, my name is Jaleel Cheek. Um, I performed a little bit of a style called J-Setting. 
um, on the South Lawn, close to LaBauer Park. And Jay Setting um, originated um, from Jackson State and Mississippi, uh, Jackson, Mississippi. And it's a form of majorette style dance, uh, kind of a call and response um, teamwork sort of dance. And it just kind of flows from very energetic movement to also very soft and sultry movement. And it's just about uh, being seen and kind of just uh, expressing happiness. So yeah, that's a little bit of what I did. So when did you, so when did you um, kind of discover, what led you to discover J setting and sort of incorporate it in the dance that you do? Well, I came to the, UNC, uh, the school of UNCG in 2008. And at that time, I had uh, worked with bands and been in a marching band sort of style um, upbringing. And then I met a couple of friends. And being that J setting kind of derives in a, a LGBT um, African American male um, sort of genre, um, I kind of just collected a little bit of style from meeting various people. And it's just kind of brought me to where I am today and it led me to teaching and traveling and expanding the knowledge of this sort of style. And I guess I should say that you um, have worked both uh, here locally and um, also have gone on tour, you're right? You've been involved with RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes, actually that's some of my biggest feats. I um, so happened to be in a particular show uh, opening up for an artist and there was a producer there who really liked the style and asked me to come and audition for the tour. And I got to take Jay setting on, on the road for RuPaul's Drag Race. So yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Do you really feel, I mean, do you feel like you're really bringing that, that style um, that you are kind of making your own to different audiences through that way? Um, I would like to think so. I like to bring the style and kind of keep it more precedent, more than a, just a simple backup dance. We really like to kind of stick to the the root of the movements and kind of just staying with that style and kind of just making it more, more, more present than just a backup. So it's two shows in one. You get to see a little bit of Jay Setting and a little bit of drag queening. <laughs> Which all goes together to make an, a, a wonderful amalgamation, I bet. And is it different sort of when you perform? Now, did you perform uh, your National Dance Day piece? Is that solo? Um, I did do a solo uh, piece for National Dance Day. Um, I just kind of took the style and made it into a little bit of a solo presentation. Um, and I guess each of you other guys, um, you, you're, you did solos as well. Uh, Tabia, tell me a little bit about your, um, you know, sort of your approach to this, uh, to your assignment when uh, Amanda called you up and said, I need you to dance in a national dance day. Yeah, so I did Africa Temporary and mm -hmm. that form of bringing contemporary dance, which infuses ballet, jazz, lyrical to Afro, right? You have the African traditional dances, you have the Afro poly rhythms, you have the storytelling in the body. And I infused those together. And then also for me, it's not just about moving, it's about the whole experience. So it's about how can I give you an experience? How can I give you joy, sadness, whatever that may be. So it's a more of a, a soul experience more than just a moving my body's or arms. So you do you when you're performing like that, what are you tapping into both in terms of you know, traditions as well as sort of your own personal experience? For sure, traditions, the African, that tradition, um, that's very much rooted in me. I started doing that when I was a, a teen at 14. So that's really, really rooted in me and hearing the drums and hearing that. But also I'm very technical. So I can do leaps and jumps and turns, you know, so that is a great fusion um, put together. And I'm really happy to show that. And um, yeah. And uh, I think you were telling you were telling me earlier, actually, some African dance was really what inspired you um, to kind of pursue dance as a as an art form. Yeah, because, you know, life brings you ups and downs and different challenges and Dance itself is a release for me. It's my outlet. So African dance in a major way saved me. 
And that's why I do it now. Um, that's, uh, I think that's, uh, you know, so, so important. Like, you know, you talk about your story, um, but it, as well about all these sort of traditional influences and these great cultural influences that come together in dance. Uh, Rami, I want to ask you a little bit too about sort of your experience. Uh, what, what, what you come from a very different tradition of mm -hmm. dance. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it and a little bit about how that made the performance that you did uh, in La Bauer Park? Sure. Um, so, hi everyone. My name is Ramya Kapadia. I live in Durham. Uh, I'm a Bharatanatyam dancer and a Carnatic vocalist. These are dance and music forms of South India. Um, I guess rituals, spirituality, aesthetics, life, all of these are um, completely intermingled in these forms. So the form that I practice, Bharatanatyam, is steeped in a lot of history, especially in the 19th century. And as I'm delving more and more into the history of the performance practices, I'm learning of how society, politics, patriarchy, caste, all of these played their hand in literally erasing the community of women who practice this form as a way of life. And now post-colonization in India, post-social reform, I am amongst thousands of other privileged, privileged through caste mm -hmm. women who cannot dream of a life without dance or music. And so um, this knowledge often weighs very heavily on me. I almost feel guilty of losing myself when I sing or dance, but I mean, isn't that the very purpose of the arts, right? So now that I'm able to unravel or unpack all of these narratives, um, and I'm, I'm trying to tra see where I fit into this puzzle. And so I hope that with every movement or with every tune, I just connect with at least one person that's watching or listening. And, um, and I hope that I don't force this connection. It just happens naturally and that we're both moved. So maybe we just find community. We heal together, love together and live together just one person at a time and form that connection. Um, and so the piece that I uh, performed uh, is not, I guess it's not technical in the sense that, uh, in the sense of what Bharatanatyam offers in terms of movements and things. But I think the essence of the piece itself is just that, you know, I offer. And so just being open, just opening yourself to what experiences are there and being able to feel, opening yourself to be able to feel, because sometimes uh, depending on what happens around you, you start just building these walls and that stops you from letting yourself see what's out there and also connecting with other people. And we all do that. So especially in, as an artist, it's easy to put on a face. We call it the dance face and, you know, just the dance face and you look, you know, especially in Bharat Nadia, it's like you sit up tall, you dance tall, and then you perform right to the audience. So we put on our dance spaces, but then what's behind is what's important. So that's what basically inspired this piece. And especially at a time like this to be able to perform. And um, I was telling Amanda, when we actually filmed, it was nice to see people, like real people in front of me and not on a camera. <laughs> so, um, so this piece was pretty special. Uh, that's wonderful. I think we can, you know, I think we can definitely talk some more uh, as we go along in our conversation today about these, you know, the challenges of performing right now. Um, but uh, I think you're, you know, you talk about that wall, um, the, you know, this idea of, of, of a wall uh, being a challenge. And I think what's kind of wonderful about dance and all the styles that you guys have already been talking about are these connections that they make about sort of breaking down what we might consider barriers, whether whether they're cultural or, um, you know, or, or societal. Um, Rami, do you, you know, do you feel like uh, in, in your experience um, that you've, you, you, you can use the dance to connect across those cultural lines and to, and to, and to connect, and like you said, to connect with different people. Absolutely. I, so um, 
besides, I mean, like the, you know, having had, ha having moved from India to the United States, but it's been more than 20 years. So mm -hmm. I've lived half my life here uh, and this is home now. Um, Durham and Greensboro have been so wonderful to me. And I've met with and danced with so many brilliant artists. Uh, all of these artists are act amazing human beings first. These people care, they question, they're ready to dive into and unpack everything that makes us uncomfortable. And that experience has changed me. Um, that kind of strength of character is rare, I think, for the most part. And so these people drive me to take to make art that is meaningful and that is something beyond just, you know, a presentation of steps or um, if I make a story, that story means something. It helps me connect to other people. So yes, um, living here, I think I found a huge community and I draw from that. Yeah, um, Jalil, you mentioned too, I mean, sort of dance is one thing that brought you to Greensboro. Um, you know, how, what do you feel about the, the community here uh, in the city? And you've gone out obviously on tour and gone to different places. Um, sort of, is there something sustaining about the local dance scenes that, that you feel? Um, yes, I feel that we have a very, very strong sense of community when it comes to dance here. Um, I've been working with various artists for years now. Once I started at UNCG, that built me so many connections from professors to um, colleagues to um, choreographers and performers. And that's just kind of cultivated um, a group of, I guess you would say, freelance dancers. And we come together very often to work on uh, multiple projects. It's almost having um, uh, almost an unofficial um, talent agency, if you will, because we have so many people on our team who have come together to provide uh, opportunities for choreography or opportunities for people to dance for their pieces or opportunities for people to travel and teach for their causes or whatever you may be doing or whatever project you're working on. So the sense of um, togetherness here for me is definitely very strong. Um, and I've worked with, um, as, as all the other dancers can probably attest, I've worked with very, very talented um, people right here in our very own community. Um, so yeah, very strong. Yeah. How about you, Tavia? I will have to agree. You know, um, we're definitely a connected community, small, but yet big at the same time, you know, and everyone knows everyone through Minty, like through all art forms. And it's just really wonderful experience. And I think for me, it's about connecting through all abilities, not just one way. How do you connect? through experience, how do you connect with your heart, with um, beyond your limbs, you know? So I really am trying to advocate and work with different people with different abilities now and see how that works with my body and how it transforms on their bodies to make it really universal. So Amanda, did, um, you know, sort of having this really lively dance community here in Greensboro, does, does that make it easy for you when you're trying, or or is that actually make it even cha more challenging when you're trying to pull together a program of dance that's really representative of um, of the different styles and traditions that are here? The hardest thing we have to do when we're setting the lineup every year is narrow it down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so because you know it's important to us that we pay um, the artists who come out to participate in National Dance Day, and so we are working from a budget. Um, so always narrowing it down and making sure that we're really showing um, the cultural, the artistic, the dance diversity of this community is really, really important to us for this event. Um, in some ways, it's also really easy, though. Like We found Jaleel uh, because he has come to the park to rehearse some of his tumbling and choreography, and we found him through Instagram uh, just by coming out to the public space and using it to practice his artistry. Um, and that's something that we've actually found happens a lot in our downtown parks, which we're super excited about because we love that people are using the space as their studio, as their rehearsal room, as their performance space. 
um, to really connect with others and highlight their art in the community, in the public space, in a visible environment. Oh, that's really interesting. And I like this idea of, you know, people, you know, using the outdoors and the park as this place uh, to perform even informally. How often have you been down to the park, Jaleel, to kind of practice? Oh my gosh, countless times. I practice with everyone that I work with in the park usually, so we're down there all the time. <laughs> so it becomes kind of this informal stage, right? Absolutely, especially with how much space and with all this social distancing, um, I just feel like it's better to kind of just get outside and get a little bit of fresh air so we can still practice our craft. So downtown is a perfect location for us. Ramia, when we were talking at the beginning, you were mentioning the, the drone kind of zooming around above your head. Uh, is it different to sort of practice? I mean, are you, do you do a lot of your performances outside? And is there a different experience sort of in being outside under the big blue sky or the clouds as opposed to inside on the stage? So over the last uh, few years, it's always been inside, like in some kind of an auditorium proscenium stage, unless it has been a festival that happens outdoors, then we're outside. Um, I think, but like, like any dancer would agree, if you have space and you have a floor <laughs> mm -hmm. and the rhythm and the music is already in your head. So <laughs> you just, you just have to move. You find an empty space and then you want to pose and you want to, you want to move. Um, but then, uh, yeah, uh, now I think with COVID, uh, all of us have been trying to find space. It's often, oftentimes it's not possible to practice at home for various reasons. So any outdoor space that's available is perfect. <laughs> How about you, Tavia? Sort of uh, has uh, the, the situation and, and sort of some of the limitations of performance places affected how you are working right now? Yes, it definitely has, but it's been a joy actually, you know, I, I think I miss being outdoors, you know, miss the sunshine, miss the wind, um, you know, I think it's a great time to be out and exploring nature now that we're here. And um, I do miss the floor mm -hmm. in the actual studio, of course I do, and the mirrors, you know, but it's a, it's a, interesting experience to know your own body when you're outside. You can't depend on anybody else, right? You only have yourself. And that means so much more because you are now learning how to grow within. So mm -hmm. that's how I look at it. Um, yeah, what, you know, so I, I'm just amazed uh, with performance, performers like you guys, how you make those adaptations and you take that kind of self-awareness uh, and turn it into something that people, you know, can appreciate uh, who are watching your and experiencing your art. Um, and of course, you guys are all involved in sharing that art with new generations. I think is, I think um, you each uh, have a teaching practice. So tell me a little bit about how um, that, that teaching part um, contributes to that bigger sense of, of what you do as a dancer. Tavia, you, 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 you mentioned this to start. Yeah, so with me and teaching, it's not just about me. Mm -hmm. It's about how can I touch someone else so I can inspire them to move. Not just like me, but however they would like to move. And that to me is what this is all about. Of course, there's technique and there's lines and there's gorgeous turns and leaps, but it's the way that you impact them to carry it further, you know? So when I teach, I try to teach from a sense of how do you feel today? <laughs> and what does that make you do with your body? And how does that make you want to jump, you know? So I, I go from that part, I go from the music and how that hits my spirit and my soul. And then I try to fine tune it all together to make a wonderful piece of art. And I try to share my culture, my tradition, a bit of history, so they can also know, you know, I learned this dance and it means this, and, 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 and also why I did it and the purpose for it. So it's a really big journey for me. It's not just a, an hour dance. It's a whole experience every time. 
How about you, Jalil? Um, I would definitely say dance is a form of self-expression in every way. And it's almost like a language and you can express any emotion or feeling through movement. And I feel that being a teacher, it's not, uh, just like Fabia said, it's not about me. It's about what I can do to help you to express how you want to move, to show your expression of whatever it may be that you're doing. And I feel that I can remember as a child or as a younger adult or in my younger years, people imprinting on my life, such as teachers and mentors and guidance counselors and all these things. And I feel that being a dance coach or a dance teacher is just like that. It's, it's, it's the same thing. You're guiding someone's young mind into moving to the future of whatever it may be that they take from you. And I feel that being that we teach dance, it's just a great way to show them how to be more of who they are and how to, to, to grow and evolve and be and take whatever it is that they want to do with dance and take it to the next level, whether it's collegiate or whether it's professional or, or even more. It's, just, it's, it's about um, giving back that, that, that growth and just being an imprint on that young mind to take them even further. And that, I, I love that. that. I never wanted to be a teacher. And, and when I started teaching, I realized like it was just so much more. And it, it just gives me such a, a different joy than just performing or, or just, just being by myself or just being in a group. It, it kind of brings it all together because it's like you're taking what you do and what you've learned and how you've grown and giving a little bit of that to someone else to help them to grow in their own way. So I love it. Is it similar for you, Ramya? Absolutely. So I, I will draw from what both of you have said. So um, though the dance form that I teach, Bharatanatyam, is very structured. It's like step one, step two, step three. There's like 108 to 120, depending on who practices it, basic steps. And then you create little pieces. So it's it's there's like a rigor, there's a structure to it. Uh, but even within that, um, I guess what really blew my mind was when I was reading about these, uh, uh, the community of women that used to practice the dance, they were supposed to be well versed in like the, the main dance, uh, dance thing women had to be well versed in 60 forms of art. And that included things like uh, you know, drawing designs on the floor. Uh, we do that in India a lot in front of the houses or, you know, makeup. But, and I was thinking, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But then when you really think about it, I think it's like paying attention to detail. Um, and also, so that's one thing we talk about mindfulness, right? Uh, be mindful in what you do in what you say, how, what, uh, how you behave and things. What is that? Just being attentive paying attention to what you're doing at that point of time. So I guess uh, in a very extrinsic way, practicing these things and making sure that you get, get things right is a way of just honing that skill. But at the same time, um, this ability to just start being able to tune. So like Tavia said, uh, you listen to music and then that inspires me or drives me to move in a certain way. So how do you even build or recognize the fact that the music is driving you to behave in a certain way? So to be able to gain that kind of, uh, I guess, sensitivity and then empathy, right? So if I can be moved in this way and this makes me feel a certain way, maybe that makes you feel differently. And to be able to recognize that and accept that and uh, and like Jalil, Jalil said, self-expression, right? So the fact that everyone's self, self-expression can be different to be able to accept that. I think all of that is what, you know, in like, I know I'm dreaming mm-hmm. <laughs> and I hope the dream comes true, but I think this is what will make for a beautiful, harmonious community. Just that ability to say you too exist just that, you know, I exist and you do too. 
just that. Um, that's an am amazing connections that you can draw there, but both between, you know, that the relationship between the teacher and the pupil, but also, like you said, just between all the participants um, in this whole, um, you know, dance project. And, and again, bringing all these traditions together, I think, is a wonderful thing about National Dance Day, Amanda. Um, let me say to our get uh, to our um, viewers, uh, if you guys have any questions, we we have a couple minutes left, so you know feel free to uh, mention it, and um, I'll uh, I'll pass them along to our viewers. Uh, but um, Amanda, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about sort of other things that are going on um, as part of the National Dance Day activities and. I couldn't help but notice Ramya in particular's comment about drawing on, uh, sort of painting on floors. Uh, I know you guys have a have a have an art project uh, that's that's part of the National Dance Day that's happening. We do. Uh, we have an art installation, a mural uh, that's going to be painted on the floor of the Price Ryan Performance Pavilion in LaBauer Park. That's the stage in LaBauer Park. Um, the mural comes by way of a collaboration. Uh, between us and Dance Project. Um, and we have two artists, a muralist, Darlene McClinton, and a choreographer, Alexandra Joy Warren, who have collaborated on the design of the mural. Um, I've seen a mock-up of it. Uh, it starts being installed today. The underlayers are going in starting today. And it's supposed to be finished being painted by end of day on National Dance Day tomorrow. Um, and the mock-up just uh, to give you kind of a sneak peek, it's based on game design, like classic board game design. Um, so it really is very playful and colorful, and it does have movement prompts um, through creative and artistic design elements, uh, like line and shape, um, that really are meant to inspire movement and prompt movement and direct engagement with the mural piece itself. So we're really excited to have this piece being installed and to bring this uh, participatory element to the parks, which is what we're missing from not having an in-person event. Um, so we were trying to think, you know, what's an alternative that we can do that still brings people to the park space in a safe way on their own time, but allows them to engage directly through movement um, in the same way that National Dance Day does when we're able to all meet as a community in person. Um, so yeah, that's the project that we have going in. Yeah, and I have to say, sort of from from our point of view, I think the the the, the mural piece and the visual art piece is very exciting. You know, we've been working um, really diligently here at the Greensboro History Museum over the last few months, uh, working with downtown artists and organizers uh, to collect some of a, a bunch of the the Black Lives murals matters that were along South Elm Street and to make those available for people to see here at the museum. We have um, at least one and maybe another one piece coming from Darlene McClinton. Uh, and it's just been so fascinating to me, this, this real explosion of uh, artistic expression around that, around that moment uh, and, and just um, a, as a way for people to express themselves and to say, uh, to, you know, to talk about the, necessity for racial justice and other kinds of uh, social justice and community healing, uh, you know, and just insistence on more equity and equality here within our city and our community. Um, so it's great to see those practices and those expressions finding other outlets uh, in different parts of the city. So I think it's, a, it's actually sort of an amazing creative time here in Greensboro. Um, and I'm so glad that each of you guys is part of it. Um, I want to know, do you guys have any questions for each other? You know, something you want to ask one of the other dancers or to, uh, to find out more about? I would like to learn. <laughs> um, is it is it called J setting? Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Yes, I would like to learn. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, <hey. laughs> yes um, I don't know any other kind of dance uh, other than Bharatanatyam. And so anybody and anytime anybody says they're doing like a master class or something, I'm just like, may I 
Can I help? I promise I'll not bump into other people or I'll try. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that would be tons of fun. Um, I will definitely make sure that to connect with all of you guys um, yeah. via social media. So that way, when I am offering those classes, we can definitely connect. I would love to come and learn from you guys as well. I think that, Tavia, I am pretty sure that I knew you as a freshman in UNCG. I think they used to dance with Dwayne and Robin. Mm. Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Wow, the small world. Again, dance again, big and small at the same time, right? So yeah, I was a senior, probably heading off doing my thing, right? That's great. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> See the magic of Zoom bringing people together and public yeah. programs and history museums. Uh, it's uh, it, it's great that um, you know you can connect. And again, I think it's uh, that this this dance project, um, the, the dance day effort is really um, an amazing connector uh, among people. And, uh, you know, hopefully next year when we get to it, um, the, uh, you know, people will be able to come back together and, you know, and learn, the, you know, and, and, and all the visitors who get to, to pour into the park will be able to learn their little moves and, and I'll be out there doing my own awkward thing um, as well with the rest of you guys. Uh, I think we're going to try to uh, see if we can put the, give you guys a little taste of the video here uh, to so folks can get a sense of what to expect. So how many total uh, um, different performances, Amanda? So we have uh, 10 performers and then we have a community dance video um, where we had choreography that we put out toward the community about a month ago and we got some submissions back from that as well. So that'll be kind of Zoom style uh, is the editing for that. So in total, we have 11 videos coming out tomorrow. Um, that is so exciting. Um, I'll be tuning in and I'm sure our other guests here will as well. Um, I guess I'm just going to say thank you guys so much. It's been really so fascinating talking to each of you, hearing about your stories, uh, about your experiences and about your art and look forward to seeing all of what you guys do uh, on, the, on the video tomorrow. And, Hope to see you guys dancing in person around here sometime soon. Um, so uh, thanks to everybody who tuned in to History Lunch Break. Uh, we'll be back next Friday. We're actually talking about voting, um, in particular the uh, North Carolina Asian American community and the importance of its vote. We have um, Ricky Leung from the North Carolina Asian Americans Together organization, uh, as well as um, Liana Adrong, uh, and uh, also from the uh, Montagnard Dega uh, Association here in Greensboro, sort of talking about um, the importance of voting. Uh, again, this is part of our project Democracy 2020. It's an all a multi-year initiative uh, where we're talking about history of American democracy and the importance of voting. Um, because right now it's time to make sure you've got that registration ready uh, and that you are prepared to vote in our elections uh, and support and sort of be part of our democracy. Uh, so that'll be coming next week uh, at 12 o'clock. And so tune in then. Um, again, thanks to all our, uh, thanks to you guys for taking some time to talk to us today. 
Um, I, uh, I really appreciate you being on History Lunch Break. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. It was awesome. It was wonderful to talk with all you guys. Same here, thanks. Yeah.